Um, so pretty much what misophonia feels like is like for most people, the sound that you get when you hear nails on a chalkboard, imagine that reaction you get for something super common, like every single time you see the color blue, you get the feeling inside that you get when you listen to nails on a chalkboard. It's just because it's the color blue. Something as dumb as the color blue. And that can just set you off like that. And it's very confusing, it's very frustrating, and it does interfere with your daily life. Just because you can just be enjoying something and then all of a sudden, well, there's the color blue and it has to just come in and make things difficult. And sometimes it is easier than others, but other times, yeah, it gets really hard. Um, it, just, it just basically feels like all your surroundings are attacking you and it's terrible. It's just, I can't, I cannot even describe what it feels like on the inside and you eventually like, you get these strange thoughts that you wouldn't normally get in a good mood, like you kind of want to hurt that person. <laughs> I shouldn't be thinking these things because I, like I just said, I'm not a violent person. Hi, my name is Jackie. I'm 16 years old and I have misophonia. Throughout early childhood, it's never, I've never really had a problem with noises or anything like that. I mean, I'd get annoyed just like any other person with feelings does. But things didn't really start to get kind of weird until around middle school when I kind of started noising, e noticing eating noises more, like crunching, eating crunchy foods or chewing things. Those things never really bothered me until a certain point. It was just one day to the next. When I was younger, something very strange would happen to me a lot. There were certain noises that would set me off and not just annoy me, I mean invoke these incredible, extremely powerful emotional responses, and I didn't know for the longest time what was wrong with me. And then one night, a couple of years ago, I was on StumbleUpon, and I came across a page that was a list of psychiatric disorders. It was like a full, long catalog, and I was going through and I was reading all of them, and I came across one called misophonia. I was going through all these symptoms, and I realized, hey, this sounds familiar. It's like, hey, this is annoying, and it pretty much it got me angry and I didn't understand why I was angry I just knew that I was I just thought like I'm being bratty or maybe everyone else feels this way and they just hide it my parents like didn't know what was wrong with me this was undiagnosed until I figured it out myself I didn't even know this disorder existed I just thought I was a weird fuck you may be thinking what the f Misophenia is a selective sound sensitivity syndrome. What? A bloody tongue twister? Which basically means I get annoyed at noises, and these noises that I absolutely hate get amplified in my ears, and all I can hear is these annoying noises that I don't like. People with this disorder have different trigger sounds. So mine, my biggest ones are slurping, the sound of chewing and slurping and like people enjoying a meal. If there's not background music, even still to this day, I have a lot of trouble dealing with that. Like, if I go to a restaurant, there better be some kind of background noise. If someone opens up to you and says they struggle with misophonia, oh my god, don't trigger them on purpose to be funny. What is wrong with you? Certain sounds physically hurt me, if that makes any sense at all. And when I hear those sounds, I have to run. I have to get out of the room. I can only tolerate those sounds for so long because they they really hurt. Gum popping. That's just a very loud, loud crack. It's annoying. Uh, tapping your pencil on the desk. If I'm gonna go somewhere, I like it to be where there's constant noise. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but like concerts don't bother me, even though bass in a car does. I can go to a concert, I'm not triggered, and there's so many people there and the music is so loud that I can't hear anything to be triggered, if that makes sense, and it probably doesn't. A plastic bag crinkling, mainly before it was just because if I heard a plastic bag crinkling, it would be because I know like, oh no, this is a bag of chips, someone's gonna start eating. Uh, also kind of a no pattern that I noticed among all these sounds is uh, repetition. I cannot stand repetition. People dragging their feet on the ground, it really irritates me to the point where I'll start shaking and 
um, I'll start sweating and my heart will start pounding. It's just, it's not fun. And I also feel like I'm really hypersensitive to sounds, so I'll hear clocks ticking and watches ticking, even if other people don't hear them. I can't look at people sometimes when they shake their foot. Also, that's another tactile thing. I keep a level head in life. I do not get angry very easily, and I'm very proud of that. But when I hear some of these trigger sounds, it's this just gut-wrenching, savage, primal anger, the likes of which nothing else compares to. I don't think there's any kind of an act that a person could do to me to make me that angry. I don't think anybody's ever felt this kind of anger before. I know I haven't. This is the... this particular disorder is the most angry I've ever felt in my entire life. Well, there's like, there's an escalation of getting frustrated with this, and the first step to the escalation when you're trying to bottle it up, and this is true with a lot of people that have this, they mimic the people doing the trigger noises, and it's not, it's not for any reason, it's just like, like, you want to tell the person that they're driving you nuts, but there's no real way to do that because people with this disorder know that, like, they're being fucking irrational. You know, it's kind of like, not nice to hurt someone else and you can get suspended so uh, there was times where I kind of took it out on myself um, and I would self-harm just because I couldn't let out that frustration I couldn't let it out into the open and it just like it builds and builds and builds and builds and you hit a breaking point and then finally these flight or fight responses you just you can't do it you have to get out of the room I've always said that <clears throat> in my own personal hell would be to be locked in a room and hear those sounds over and over and not be able to get out. I don't, I, I can't even imagine it. it. It would, I would die. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's just, there's no way to describe how angry and painful those sounds are to someone that has misophonia. And it really impacts my life because I find myself having to remove myself from a lot of situations where there's um, noises that I find unnecessary or irritating and it's just, it's really difficult. And my third tip is make sure it's clear that you're not doing this on purpose, that your reactions to the sounds and your triggers are not on purpose because this is something, this is what ruined my whole relationship with everyone in my life. Coping is something that I've never learned how to do with misophonia and I don't know how to control it. I don't know how to help myself with it. I had my headphones on 24 hours a day. Never once took them off unless I was showering. I tried so hard to make those triggers not bother me. Like I'll hear it and I'll be like, don't, just don't let it bother you, just don't let it bother you. After we eat dinner, and I know my significant other is going to clear his throat, I will tell myself like, don't look at him, don't get angry with him, don't let it bother you. Don't think about it, don't think about it. Forget about it, forget about it, forget about it. And I look at something else. I just, I force, it's almost like I feel a physical force on myself, telling myself to forget about it. But it never works. I mean, it never ever works. He will start to do it repeatedly and I'm immediately triggered and we have to separate from each other. It's just, that's the way it is. I don't cope with misophonia and I don't know how to cope with it. It is, I just avoid those situations. That's how I cope. I avoid all situations in which I think that I'm going to be triggered. That is the only way that I can cope, so. And dealing with misophonia is tough, but I practice a lot of deep breathing and mindfulness, which really helps. And I also listen to music that I enjoy. Just get your headphones out, put them on, and it will drown out some of the sound. If you're having a meal with someone at your house and they're an aggravating eater, obviously you can't put headphones on. Uh, so you're actually going to speak to me this meal, or...? So put on the radio or put on the TV, and if you don't want to tell them why, just say it's for ambience. This will drown out some of the sounds, and just try and concentrate on the music or the TV. I hope this has helped you understand misophonia a bit more, and how to cope with it too. Don't forget to like this video, and subscribe if you're new. Until next time, swish out! I have a condition that I have no control of. We need support, we need awareness, we need to be together to face our mental illness. So let's share experiences and let's 
try to have positive thoughts and I don't know talk about it just because the world needs some positivity right now right don't blame yourself or try not to it's not your fault that you have this you know that you're going through this it's not your fault luckily my family well mainly my mom has been pretty supportive and understanding of my misophonia along with my best friend if they notice that they're tapping on something and i just kind of give them a look they're like okay i'm sorry and then they stop doing it i know they don't do it on purpose yes it's hard when someone doesn't understand what you're going through but if they're willing to help you willing to be there for you let them help i just ask people to be mindful of their volume level and usually if I do it in a respectful manner they'll be more than willing to be quieter or stop doing whatever um, is irritating me and it works out. It is a challenge to live with misophonia but with time and effort it does get better so I encourage people to stay positive and to stay motivated. Focusing on the good things you like will definitely make you get better and handling your emotions towards the triggers and being able to cope with yourself and not blame yourself all the time. You guys who lo have loved ones that have misophonia to say that we're just being petty or that we're over exaggerating the situation, I've heard that a lot my in my life. That is not the case whatsoever at all. I just also just wanted to say thank you, Mia, for asking me to become a part of this film. I feel like it could really help other people understand misophonia, hearing from sufferers themselves, and I think it's a really great thing that you're doing, so thank you. You are not alone in this, and we can get awareness out about this particular disorder. It is life-changing, and I really, really want to spread awareness about it. If you know anybody who's afflicted with misophonia, be considerate. It's some shit.